Good morning, everyone. This is Wayne from ECRM. Hope everyone's doing well. Um, I'm here today with uh, a good friend and industry associate and industry thought leader, Dan Mack. Dan, it's good to see you again. Good to see you too, Wayne. That's actually one of the nicest offices I've ever seen. Is that real? Thank you, Dan. This is my aspirational office. So okay. maybe one day. It's always aspirational when I talk to you, Dan. Thank you, Wayne. But for those who don't know Dan, Dan is a, a strategist. He's an advisor. He's a performance coach. He's an author of a book, uh, How Challenger Dark Costs, How Challenger Companies Rise to Prominence. It's a book that I, I've read, and it's, it's pretty good. I know Dan is also working on another book. Uh, he is the founder of the Elevation Forum Leadership Group, which is a, a leadership share group that I've been involved with for many years. And uh, Dan brings uh, many years of uh, sales leadership experience, uh, including uh, GlaxoSmithKline, Gojo, and uh, Dentech Oral Care. Uh, Dan is an advocate of uh, professional leadership and development and is a coach to many uh, executives in the industry. Uh, so, Dan, it's a pleasure once again to see you and have you here. I know today we want to talk about uh, the mindset of suppliers in today's environment. Um, obviously, over the last three months, there's been a pivot on the retail side to SNS which I uh, call safety and supply chain. And it's really, you know, diverted the attention of the retailers to some of the uh, conversations they may be having with, with, with suppliers in the marketplace. And as you know, ECRM has created a, a really unique virtual uh, platform of high touch and high tech. And um, Dan, I wanted to get with you today to pick your brain about what you're seeing and what you're hearing from the supplier community. Thank you, Wayne. I think there's a ton of content out there these days about how retail is changing, how the store is changing, how digital is accelerating and transforming everything. You know, I heard there's a fact recently, I just, I just heard that I think it was, again, mind blowing. It took 25 years for 15% of the all commodity revenue to be done on, on, on uh, dot com. And in 75 days, it went up to 25%. That level of acceleration is significant. But I think what I want to focus on is the mindset that's shifting. So sales organizations, marketing organizations, how they engage with retailers, how they think through their solution, how they think through the value they're creating, that's changed too because the mindset of the retailer has changed. So I want to talk a little bit about that. Um, Here's the psychology shift that I'm seeing. There's a lot of shifts, but here are five quotes that I actually were voiced to me from five retail leaders that I actually think the world of. One is, they said, I'm actually in a financial mindset. I'm in an essentials mindset, and I'm assessing everything as if it's the first time I'm looking at it. The second thing they said is, since we're selling so many essential goods, both digitally and dropping it off out in front of the store for consumers to pick it up, our yield is going down, our profit is going down, and that gap will need to be fulfilled and, and filled at some point. So they're selling a lot of goods, but the margin's lower. So if you're not an essential product, you better make sure you're a wickedly profitable product moving into the future. Third quote, they said, I'm looking for thinkers, not just salespeople. I'm looking for people who think and can create. And they also said, I'm looking for people who can fix things. I'll give you an example. There's two broker partners. I won't, I won't give the name just because for confidentiality reasons. There's two broker partners I know in the industry. One's a boutique specialist. One is a national operator. Their mindset now is any question that a major retailer asks them, even if it's in an area that they don't even focus on, they're going to fix that problem. That mindset is they fix things. And that's why they're received so incredibly well by the retailer community. I think that's a clue for manufacturers. Can you fix things? Mm -hmm. And I think that's the psychology of most of the, the people we call on now. Um, and you have to understand that that's a different mindset. It's not about selling your goods and your product only. It's about can you fix things? Mm -hmm. And maybe things that you're not even prepared at this point to fix. So, I, so Wayne, I think there's a couple of there's a couple of new rules that I think um, are accelerating, but I think they've always been rules. They're they're now being illuminated because of the world we're in right now. These have always been truths, but it's even more vital now. 
you if you if you're selling a product to a retailer whether you're a multinational or a startup you got to deliver a shopping trip meaning somebody hopefully is walking in that store looking for you not just looking at the category and making a decision on what's in the category but do you make something that's actually on the list something they want the second thing is are you bringing in a new customer so are there are you, are you either bringing in somebody who's normally in another retailer or buying online buying somebody else's goods but are you bringing somebody into the store or into the category that's normally not in the category and if you can do that you're very special you're actually very unique you can think of many companies i know i know you and i have had these talks for for years about those kind of companies that really are special and really look unique you go back 15 years whether it be method or you look at what ali is doing or you look at some of the businesses that are really digitally native and then they come to retail and they they they're they're connecting with a new consumer there, there's something fresh about it that's really attractive i think now more than ever if you're not an essential product, you better be one of those products outside of the core essential business. And then I think the third thing that's really being accelerated and amplified is, um, are you incremental to the basket? A lot, of, a lot of innovations love to say that they're new to a category, they're incremental to a category. Very few are. There's a, a ton of trading. So are you either incremental or incrementally bringing significantly more profit are really key. So I think, I think like kind of the mindset of the retailer is they're looking for partners who, who I'm going to use the word, have an outward focus, not an inward. So if, whether you're a startup, or whether you're one of the big five health and wellness companies or beauty companies, you're unique and valuable if you have an outward focus. You're actually um, more concerned about my agenda, meaning the person I'm talking to, than, than my own personal agenda. And I think companies and leaders who represent themselves that way, especially in this moment, they're very unique. And I'll, I'll call them, they're very elite. They're one in 20 companies do that. There's, there's, there's always a self-centeredness that starts showing up that I think a, a retail partner starts sensing very quickly. And then you lose trust. So there's going to be winners and losers, but I think, Wayne, the, the real winners moving into the future, um, they have high trust and, and they protect trust. So I, I know you've done a lot of, you, you spend, there's probably nobody in America that spends more time with retailers than you. <laughs> I spent a lot of time with VP of sales and that's part of my work coaching. There's nobody who spends more time with retailers than you. And Tell me about like the three or four areas that you think from a trust perspective, um, yeah. you can't violate trust with yeah. them. Yeah, Dan, it's interesting. So, you know, over the last couple of months, there have been some, I think, some really core central themes that I've been hearing. And, uh, you know, not in any order of uh, priority, but basically the four things I'm hearing is from the retailer is what is the supplier's supply chain capabilities? You know, how can you ensure that those supply chain capabilities don't break down and really understanding not only your supply chain, but the supply chain of your supplier. We're really talking about downstream consideration of the entire supply chain. So I think for suppliers, it's important to bring to you, bring to the retailer their uh, understanding of the supply chain. Okay. Uh, also, you know, understanding your manufacturing ca capacities. Uh, can you produce if, if you do have a surge in demand? Uh, you know, do you own your own plants? Do you outsource your business? Uh, you know, and there's going to be a big, uh, a big focus push towards localization. Are your products made in the United States? Uh, and what does that look like? Are you a prime manufacturer? Wayne, on that one, do you think that that could be a special asset in the future that a company could bring to the table and really win, win the ties or really be in an advantageous position by actually making it here in this country? I, I actually do think, Dan, there's going to be a, a surge of uh, a production capability manufacturing, of localized manufacturing. Um, we are beginning to see that happening here now. Yes, yeah. I do. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is, obviously, in a time of uh, economic stress or, uh, uh, or, or consideration of such, you know, obviously, it's important that consumers understand your brand. 
Uh, there's tends to be at, at, during, you know, recessionary periods, lean into bigger, well-established brands. So I think for those smaller brands, it's going to be important for them. Uh, how well are they known to the consumer? Um, obviously in today's mobile centric e-commerce world, you know, how important is your, you know, how, how strong is your social media footprint? Do you have the right content to engage the supplier? And, you know, also I think what is your innovation pipeline? Um, I think that's very important because I do believe there will be a surge of innovation coming out of this. Maybe not in the next six to nine months, but definitely beyond that, there will be a surge in innovation. And clearly in, in, in the times of pandemic and everyone trying to optimize their health care, you know, it's the whole focus around health and wellness. Health and wellness penetrates across every area that we live in, uh, every product. So how, you know, how well are your product capabilities uh, around helping improve health and wellness. Uh, obviously, that goes beyond just traditional OTC, but it includes food. It includes, you know, now traveling on an airplane. It includes now, you know, staying in a hotel. It's, you know, going to a food service. And, you know, um, you know, I do steal from that, from that perspective. You know, Wendy Liebman from WSL does talk a lot about the big business of wealth. And, and clearly, uh, we are right there now. So I think those are some of the things that I'm hearing from the retail community. And um, I think for suppliers to understand that and bring that forward would really bode them well. Makes, makes a ton of sense, Wayne. Let, let's take it back to, um, so if you understand what's on their mind, and if you understand that we're in almost like a necessity economy, you have to be creating products that are necessary and solutions that are necessary. I, I still wanna go back to it and kind of remind everybody the big blind spot is this is still a business of human beings. Flesh and blood talking to each other, trust. And when that's violated, you can be the most digital, digitally agile company in the world and you will fail if I don't trust you. So I want to go back to four skills that we talk about. You and I have talked about in year, for years in the forum. We've talked about it in terms of how companies show up. Again, I'm going to say this is not new, but it's accelerated right now. So being present, I think, is the great separator. When you're present, somebody knows you're present. So I think in a digital world now where you're doing digital calls, you have to be incredible, incredibly prepared, incredibly concise, and thoughtful and present. You need to be picking up the nonverbal cues that are going on, which are very difficult to pick up. I think it's interesting. In a 30-minute call, there's almost a thousand nonverbal cues that go on with two people. So, I mean, when you're, when you're looking at a screen, you're not seeing a lot of things and you're not being able to pick up on what they want and whether they're with you and whether there's other things on their mind. You got to be present. So that's number one. Number two, 95% um, of people think they're, they're self-aware. The number says it's closer to 10%. That's, that's all of us. All of us can be more self-aware. So, when I think of companies that are self-aware, they're not just selling their goods. Going back to what we talked about, they are selling vision. They're uncovering unstated needs. It's about the client first. They fix things. And then hopefully they're selling their products also. But, but that's not a, their, their mindset is very different. So they're always asking the question, kind of what's not, what's not working in the category that I can fix? And so it's a, it's a, they're very self-aware about that. The third thing is, I'm going to call it, um, they, they don't laundry list people with information. They get to the most vital insights. So in this world now, the, every category, there's a new behavior going on that's different in every category. Hair care products are very different than sanitizers right now. High-end high -end beauty, prestige beauty is very different than oral health. There's different dynamics going on. So the, the, the key insight, no matter who you are, is what is the vital insight that's changed in the, with the consumer in your category and how is it affecting the category? And then what's the one action step you can activate? Helping people understand the one activation step. Um, and then I think the last behavior is, again, this idea that people are so, feeling so overwhelmed, especially our retail partners with so much work, so much activities. They want innovation. So can you co-create now something that's on their mind? Can you co-develop ideas with them now? 
because that's a really nice break from the mundane of being on 12 hour Zoom calls all day. What's interesting? What's new? What's changing? So um, I, I think the big thing, Wayne, that I, that I think I'm just, I, after s- talking to 30 VP of sales recently, I'm realizing yeah. that um, we got to be more empathetic. We got to be more holistic. That's the future of partnerships. And that retailers want to do business with companies with a purpose and, and soul and that they trust. And I think yeah. that's the, be- even before the product, like you got to get that right and you got to yeah. protect that. So that's kind of the, the things that have been hitting me as I'm having these yeah. conversations. Yeah, Dan, I, I think that's really great insight and perspective. Uh, and obviously, there's no one better than you who can bring some really good perspective to that and where things have been and where things are headed from a supplier engagement point of view. And um, I would agree that uh, suppliers have to think a little less about uh, product and a little bit more holistically about what else they're bringing to the table. Um, yeah. I think in the past you've called those hidden assets and yeah. you know, those are tangible assets and intangible assets. So I would agree with you now then now more than ever, that's critical. Um, but, uh, I, I appreciate your time. Uh, I hope you're doing well there in the Midwest we are. and Thank uh, you. all's great with your, your sons and your wife and, uh, definitely, you know, stay healthy and we'll do this again soon. Thanks Wayne. Look forward to it. See you soon. Yeah.